Hello, and welcome back to The Door to the Universe. Today we're talking about the ultimate fashion statement in the galaxy, the spacesuits. You may have heard that NASA has had a few hiccups in creating and launching its latest and greatest suits. It seems like every time they try, something gets in the way, whether it's the funding, the launch date, or just bad luck. But fear not, because NASA is back with a vengeance, and they're ready to unveil their most spellbinding, flexible, and advanced spacesuit yet. Get ready to blast off into the future as we explore NASA's latest creation, set to be used by 2026. NASA has already spent more than a decade creating a next-generation spacesuit and removing the old designs while moving to new missions. According to a report published in 2021 by the NASA Office of Inspector General, this replacement plan cost NASA $420 million, but failed to result in any operational suits. As the experts estimate, NASA tends to spend nearly a billion dollars on these spacesuits even before they become operationally accessible. As said by Pablo de Leon, director of the Human Spaceflight Laboratory at the University of North Dakota, the spacesuits that are being used now in the International Space Station by NASA are the suits that were really designed in the 70s. These are the suits that were originally designed for the space shuttle program. Due to the lack of funding, NASA kept working on them, kept repairing them, and maintaining them for many years. But really, these are the suits that are at the end of their useful life. The spacesuits that are being used now in the International Space Station by, by NASA are suits that were really designed in the 70s. Talking about funding issues, he further added, there are two different issues. One was the lack of funding. NASA had to get funds from other projects to fund their suits. And the second was that there was no destination. The projects of NASA had been moving through different political agendas during the last few years. And something that you need in any scientific and technological organization is a purpose and a timeline. So NASA is now contracting with commercial companies and organizations to develop new funding paths and resources for developing these next generation suits. As the team member of NASA announced on television, so without further ado, I'm very happy to announce that the awardees will be Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace Industry Team. So without further ado, I'm very happy to announce that the awardees will be Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace Industry Team. Collins Aerospace has a 120,000 square foot manufacturing and testing space at the Houston Spaceport in Texas. While testing and moving around in these next generation spacesuits, Eric Vallis, Senior System Engineer, ILC Dover, stated that for the ISS, you want a rigid lower half with the ability to rotate around the wrist and then a consistent working envelope, which is about right here in front of you. Easy to translate along the handrails, so low torque in the super joints. Good dexterity in the gloves is a big one. For the ISS, you want a rigid lower half with the ability to rotate around the waist and then a consistent working envelope which is about right here in front of you easy to translate along the handrails so low torque in the upper joints good dexterity in the gloves is a big one nasa has named its next generation spacesuits the extravehicular mobility units nasa abbreviated this to emus which appears to be very complicated Peggy Jiranis, the general manager of space systems at Collins Aerospace. The current spacesuit has roughly 18,000 components that make it up, and the interior volume of the suit's roughly equivalent to the size of a small refrigerator, about 5.5 cubic feet. The current spacesuit has roughly 18,000 components uh, that make it up, and the interior volume of the suit is roughly equivalent to the size of a small refrigerator, about 5.5 cubic feet. While the previously designed spacesuits were working fine, many safety concerns arose with those aging spacesuits with this change space. Let's look at a few incidents that occurred in the past. As televised on the NBC Nightly News on February 26, 2014, an astronaut's helmet was filled with water. It was reported that a final investigation is in following the near drowning in space of that Italian astronaut doing a spacewalk outside the International Space Station. His equipment failed him. In fact, they say it was his calm demeanor that probably saved his life after his helmet filled with water. After that incident, NASA temporarily suspended all the spacewalks in 2022, 
and a similar incident occurred again, as explained by Laura Kearney, manager of Extravehicular Activity and Human Surface Mobility Program at NASA. We are starting to see some degradation of performance, some components that need to be replaced. So on the space station, we are really watching very, very closely the performance of the EMUs while they are still in orbit. In the meantime, these new suits for this particular failure of water in the helmet, the new designs are designed such that failure mechanism cannot occur. Some components that need to be replaced. NASA was once insisted or rightly forced to cancel the all-female spacewalk at the International Space Station in 2019. The supposedly all-female spacewalk was withdrawn because the agencies couldn't prepare the accurate-sized spacesuits for both the female astronauts. At the start of the space missions, the spacesuits were all custom-made to fit the exact body type and size. However, with the rise of the space shuttle programs, the size and body types were restricted to small, medium, and large sizes instead of customization. Surprisingly, that idea did well for some time. Nevertheless, as more and more diversity occurred in the recruitment of NASA, the sizes started to create some serious issues. Soon, the officer of Inspector General observed that out of the 18 original primary life-supported system units, only 11 are still available in NASA's inventory to assist the ISS program. Also, only four of the 11 units were immediately usable for astronauts at the ISS. Now let's move to the working principle and construction of these next generation EMUs. The PLSS, also known as the Portable Life Support System, is one of the two main parts of the EMU, which appears like a mighty backpack. As the name suggests, PLSS contains nearly all of the elements required to keep the astronaut alive. These elements include removing carbon dioxide, providing oxygen, and maintaining body temperature in the spacesuit. PGS is the second most vital part of the suit, also known as the pressure garment system. It is the white garment that completely surrounds the astronauts. PGS is responsible for maintaining accurate pressure around and on the astronaut's body to keep them stable in the vacuum of space. It also protects the astronauts from space dust or debris. A liquid cooling and ventilation garment is worn underneath the PGS, which, in combination with PLSS, controls the body temperature by water flow. The previous spacesuit designs have the same components as mentioned above, but are less advanced, as said by Laura Kearney. There's just certain normal, what we call obsolescence issues, certain parts that we just can't get anymore. And so we are building a new suit so that we can start using new components, take advantages of all the new technologies that are available to us now that simply were not available nearly 50 years ago. It's normal, what we call obsolescence issues, certain parts we just can't get anymore. And so we are building a new suit so that we can start using new components, take advantage of all of the new technologies that are available to us now that just simply weren't available nearly 50 years ago. She further added, the beauty of this contract is the functional requirements for those two suits are very, very close. So at any given time, we could ask either of those contractors to actually start working on the other, what we call platforms. And we also have what we call an on-ramp clause in the contract, which means if another company comes into play and they have the capability to compete, we can actually bring them on to the contract and allow them to compete on task orders as well. Under the Exploration Extravehicular Activity Services contract, or XEVAS, NASA is funding Axiom and Collins Aerospace with over $3.5 billion until the end of 2034. The first contract that Axiom won was for designing spacesuits used during the Artemis moon missions by NASA. This contract was worth $22.85 million. However, Collins Aerospace got the second contract to design and create the largest generation of suits for the International Space Station. The second contract got funding of $97.2 million. Now let's wait till the start or mid of 2026 to get an official launch of the EMUs. Till then, let us know in the comments what you would like to learn about next. Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for constant updates.